Welcome to the Motorhome Matt podcast. Caravans, campervans, motorhomes and more. It's the place to get hints, tips and impartial advice from the expert himself, Matt Sims. Brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. Join us on the journey with Motorhome Matt. Welcome back to the Motorhome Matt podcast. My name's Keith Gooden and I'm here with our expert, Matt Sims. And a very good day to you, Matt. Good day, Keith. I tell you what, I've got my motorhome. I've taken the plunge, I've come to you, and I've rented it, but I don't know what to do with it. I know the campsites, but it's very difficult to find online places to book and what I should be doing, and if I want to go from one to the other. So, have you got any advice for me? Certainly. Well, thank you for booking with us. (laughs) You're absolutely right. There is no Expedia or Trivago for booking campsites. You have to go online and use Google, and you'll end up finding campsites on about seven different websites there are clubs which you can book that you can join and book into online you'll find the camping and caravanning club the caravan motorhome club these are two of the uk's biggest clubs that own lots of campsites around the uk and there are other great websites as well search for sites is a really really useful website where people contribute places that you can stay that don't just include campsites because Although as a motorhome hire business, we might recommend that you go to a campsite. There are other places you can stay too. Lots of pubs are offering their car parks to motorhome owners to stay in, in the hope that they'll come and have a meal and a drink few too many to drive and so want to spend the night in their car park. Some of those places are free actually. So there are lots of places that you can find a campsite, but sadly there is no one easy solution. Campsites UK is another very basic type of website but it has a brilliant database of campsites all over the UK uh, which you'd find really useful so if you've hired a motorhome speak to the hire company and they'll be able to point you in the right direction as to where to start so what should I expect when I roll up at a campsite then in my newly rented uh, motorhome I don't know much about it do I plug something in are there shower blocks is it like carry on camping (laughs) <laughs> it, it can be a bit like carry on camping yeah I was once asked a really good question when I arrive at the campsite do I drive on or reverse on as someone who's been motorhoming for years it just seemed like a really bizarre question but for someone who's never done it before I got it I get it it's like well I don't know it depends where the view is here yeah, bear in mind you've got this big panoramic window called a windscreen that you can see out of you want to make sure you're taking in the view so being Parked so you can see out is a really good idea. The the rear door called the habitation door, the one you go in and out of to get into the back of the motorhome, the living area, you want to make sure that's opening out onto your pitch. There's a lot of territorial behaviour on a campsite where people will be, well, you're in my space, you know, you're too close to my edge of my pitch. And that does go on. So just be mindful of that. Be considerate to your neighbour who may not have arrived yet. Campsite pitches normally have white lines or maybe logs to determine your pitch. But on arrival at a campsite, the first thing to do is to go to reception and let them know you've arrived. Assuming it's got a reception, there will be a warden there or receptionist who will welcome you and they'll tell you the pitch number, if you don't already know it, that you're booked onto. And they'll tell you where to go to find it. Campsites vary in size, of course. Some only have five pitches. Uh, Others will have 500, and there'll be a mix of tents, caravans, motorhomes, static caravans as well. And those types of sites will often, they'll have a little man on a little tractor. The man may not be little, but the tractor probably is. But they have a guy on a tractor that will come and escort you to your pitch and show you where it is. You need to remember as well that you need water in the motorhome, so you want to fill that up if you've arrived with no water on board, and you can normally do that at the arrival point fill up with water and then head off to your pitch where you can then get set up so it's really very simple there's some really basic stuff that you'll think well I don't know what to do ask your neighbour we're a friendly bunch motorhomers generally are very very friendly people we wave at each other on the roads you know from inside lane of a motorway to inside lane of the opposite carriageway we're waving at each other we're a friendly bunch of people so don't be shy ask your neighbour, they will love to help you and no doubt then tell you about their 28 years of motorhoming experience which might go on into the small hours. I remember once we had a family come back from a hired holiday with us in a motorhome and they said no, I always say how was it, how was your trip, no, no, not for us. They said really why, what was wrong? Now they were from central London 
And they said, oh, well, gosh, we arrived and this chap came over and offered us a cup of tea, offered to help us. Obviously, the motorhome had hire written on it, asking us where we'd hired it from, had we done it before. And, you know, he came with tea and cake. And then in the evening, they had a barbecue and they were cooking a steak. And, and I'm like, what? This sounds amazing. This, <laughs> where was this? I want to go. They said, no, we didn't like it at all. And I think they spend every day staring down at their phone being busy in work and oblivious to the fact the rest of the country and the rest of the United Kingdom is a really, really friendly place. Now, that's not to say anything against people that live in London, not at all. But I think if you're not used to you know, travelling in this type of holiday, it can be a bit of a culture shock. For a different type of holiday, why not try a motorhome? At the Motorhome Holiday Company, we have a range of luxury motorhomes available to hire for weekends or longer breaks. Experience the freedom and excitement of the open road with all the comfort of home while you're on the move, whatever the weather or time of year. For details and to check your dates, visit motorhomeholidaycompany.com. The Motorhome Holiday Company. Your adventure starts here. Well, I've got my motorhome, Matt. If <laughs> but the thing is, I don't want to go to these campsites. I don't want to be organised. I don't want to be talking to people, as you've just described. What I want to do is I want to set up every night in a field or on a beach. But I can't do that, can I? So there are lots of rules and laws around wild camping about what you can and cannot do. Sometimes you'll, you'll stop in a lay-by and you'll see it says no overnight stopping. And, of course you shouldn't. Uh, if you stop in motorway services because you're travelling through, you often have to pay. That's our number one fine when people are unsuspecting and we receive a fine because they didn't pay to park the night in the motorway services. Camping on the beach, some beaches you may be able to get away with it, but really, really, you must be very mindful. There's a, an approach called leave no trace, where there's no evidence that you've been there at all. While camping is actually referred to a person with a backpack and a tent arriving at sundown and leaving at sunrise. That's what wild camping is all about. And in fact, why don't we do another podcast on wild camping where we can deep dive into the rules and how you do it, what's involved and what you can and can't do. There's a big trend for people looking to travel Scotland and do what's called the North Coast 500. So all of the coast of Scotland in a big circle and stopping at places which are not campsites. So some of the most beautiful countryside you'll see is there on the edge of a lake or a loch and in the grounds of a castle. And it's been very, very contentious with the locals that live there. And people are stopping on privately owned land. And, and you're not allowed to do it. You're simply not allowed to do it. Our advice is always, especially if you're new to this, book into a campsite. If you want something that's quieter and more remote, then book a campsite which offers that. Don't book into a big haven type site. It's going to be the complete opposite of that. So book into a site where there are only five or six uh, motorhome pitches. You may not have an electric hookup to plug the motorhome in, that's okay. Everything in the motorhome is still going to work apart from the three-pin sockets. So you can still charge a phone on a USB. You've still got heating. You've still got hot water. You can still cook. Everything runs off gas or the battery. So my advice would be if you crave a quieter campsite, then there are hundreds out there all around the coasts and around the mainland of the UK where you can tick that box and have that type of holiday if that's what you choose to have. You've already said that there's uh, not a, a Travago-type website for booking a campsite. So if you want to jump from one to the other, it's quite difficult. So you have said that uh, when you hire uh, the vehicle that you can give some advice. But if somebody wants to be a bit more organised, what's your advice to them to get those bookings made and to plan, say, a two-week holiday with maybe maybe four different stops in it? Yep, yeah, so that would be a very sensible approach. Most people don't adopt that, I have to say. The perceived freedom that comes with a motorhome holiday is what people crave and, and that's part of the adventure. And go for that, go with it, that's brilliant. Planning ahead, if you want to do that, some people need to do that, we understand that. You can do that and, and have two or three nights on a particular campsite and then change to another campsite. Some campsites will have a minimum five-night stay. So we've had customers that have booked for a week 
and booked three campsites and just written off a couple of nights at the campsite. That comes with a cost, of course, to do that. But you may have to get creative in how you book and what you book where. The vast majority of motorhomers, I would say, focus more on the motor than they do the home. And so they look at a different campsite every night of the week for a week's holiday and come back absolutely exhausted. And that's a classic newbie mistake. I say adopt our rule of three. So spend three hours driving and maybe three days in a location, two nights, and move on to the next spot, another three hours driving. If you've got children on board, they're not going to find the journey the most fun bit. It's on the campsite. And having a couple of nights on a campsite mean you can relax into it. So you can set up. The first night might be late to bed because you've arrived, you've unpacked and set everything up. And then you've got a full day just to chill out and relax, have a relaxed evening, and then the following day you pack up and move on, which of course is really easy to do in a motorhome. But in my experience anyway, a different campsite every night of a week is exhausting. If you just relax a little bit, do two or three, maybe four in a week, you'll find you'll feel like you've been away for at least a fortnight. This is a tale of two motorhomes, Eric and Lucy. Oh, I'm Eric. Lonely, tired, neglected, bits falling off. Lucy here. Life is sweet. I look fabulous. I earn my owners thousands of pounds taking families away for little holidays. And I'm looked after by Motorhome Holiday Company. Motorhome Holiday Company. No one wants a poor Eric. Let yours be a Lucy. Speak to us about the storage, maintenance and rental of your motorhome. Visit motorhomeholidaycompany.com. And finally, is it a good idea for me not to book anywhere, just start driving my motor home, have a couple of ideas where I could stay and roll up and say, here I am, put me up for the night? Yeah, <laughs> you, could, you could. I'd advise against it. It really depends on the time of year. So if it's the winter, you'll find a lot of campsites are closed. If it's the summer, and I mean peak summer, you'll find a lot of campsites, especially in the current times, are going to be fully booked and won't be able to accommodate you or at best they'll be able to accommodate you in the overflow car park which is not really very glamorous although once the blinds are down you could be anywhere I would advise you not to do that it also depends on where in the country you are if you're in a fairly remote part of Britain then you may find the campsites are quieter but in the school summer holidays and you want to go to Cornwall definitely book ahead another factor of course is campsites have been through the mill with a lot of challenges around covid19 where in 2020 they were only at half occupancy because they were creating space between pitches now i think they put the prices up to offset that and last year many of them relaxed it kept the prices high and upped the occupancy really who can blame them for doing that they lost half of their year in 2020 and they've had a lot of uncertainty and a lot of increased costs there's also been a huge demand so campsite prices have undoubtedly gone up as prices for many types of British holiday have you'll need to be mindful that the campsite will want to know you're coming and that will help them plan with numbers and their own Covid policies as well so I would suggest booking ahead if you are going to chance it you are chancing it and I would always have a number of options in your plan, have a plan B, C and D in terms of where you could end up staying. Worst case scenario, you end up spending the night in a motorway services, not very glamorous, often very noisy. I can guarantee you're probably not in for a very relaxing night's sleep. How much does it cost me to stay for a night on a campsite? Again, time of year is going to be a huge factor and the facilities on the campsite. But anywhere I would say 10 or £15 pounds would be a realistic starting price. That's going to be a pretty basic campsite. So a field with a flushing toilet and somewhere to empty the wastewater and your own toilet in the motorhome. It might have a washroom, but that's really going to be it. And then up to bigger campsites where there's clubs and entertainment for kids, maybe a bar. And they tend to be much bigger, as I referred to earlier, a haven type site. And you could be looking at up to £100 a night. So it really does depend what type of holiday you want to have. Personally, I prefer the more basic. Put me on a hill or a field overlooking a coastal bay. If it's got a toilet on site, great. I've got my own toilet in the motorhome, so I'm probably just going to use that. I'd be happy in a field paying £10-15 a night to a farmer. That would suit me. But really, depends what you want. 
Matt Sims, thanks very much. Another Motorhome Matt podcast. Make sure you keep looking and keep up to date with more expert advice from Motorhome Matt. Thank you, Keith. We'll see you soon. Thanks for listening to the Motorhome Matt podcast. Remember to check back here for more episodes full of hints and tips and helpful advice. We'll see you soon for another Motorhome Matt podcast brought to you with thatleisureshop.com. <laughs>